Hello everybody and welcome inside the CrossFit Update Studios. I'm Pat Sherwood and today I'm joined by a young woman who competed on the Invitational team way back in 2012 when we first started this thing and she is currently the fittest woman in the world. Of course, I'm talking about Katrin Davis' daughter. Katrin, thanks for joining us. Hey Pat, thanks for having me. <laughs> I know it's, uh, it's late over there in Iceland. We appreciate you making time. So first of all, we've got to know, congratulations. How does it feel to be the champ? Thank you. Um, it still feels like a dream. Um, of course, it's a lot of hard work all year. And for that to pay off with winning the CrossFit Games, it's, it still doesn't feel real. But um, at least it's a good dream. <laughs> it's a great dream. And, you know, we've got a lot of new fans that tune in every year, so they don't maybe know their CrossFit history. But, you know, you went to the Games in 2012, you took 30th. 2013, you took 24th. And then before winning in 2015, something happened in 2014. You didn't make it to the Games. We're going to relive that pain. If you go back, you watch the footage, you were crushing events. And then all of a sudden, on day two, event five, which was 10 rounds of one legless rope, rope climb and a 200 foot sprint it all kind of came crashing down in round eight. And, you know, we see who's now the champ back then, hands and knees, brink of tears, being consoled. So we can see what happened physically, but what was going on in your head during that event? Um, so legless rope climbs was um, a movement that was a weak, uh, weakness of mine. Um, so when 10 legless rope climbs for time show up with nowhere to hide, I was really nervous. And I finished seven rope climbs, and on my eighth one, I fail one, and I immediately crumble. Um, I lost it mentally, and kind of like, I don't know if I immediately just decided that I wasn't going to make the games because I didn't make that one rope climb. Of course, if I would have just got myself together, got myself composed, sure. um, like not let it hit it in a big way. I mean, people fail rope climbs all the time, um, but I didn't make it. I tried again and again, and I didn't make it back up. Um, and that was just too big of a fall. So, um, yeah, I think it was more like a mental breakdown rather than anything physical because I was in good shape that year. Um, yeah, you had a lead going into that event. It obviously didn't go your way. At the end, you know, you continued. Day three comes to a close, and unfortunately, you don't earn one of those qualifying spots. You finish sixth. You don't go to the games that year. How did that experience shape the woman that we're talking to today? Um, I read all these books about like these great athletes that most of the time when they have like big failures, they come back so much stronger. And at the same time, I started reading like all these sports psychology books. I started working so much more with Ben Bridgeron, who's now my coach. And um, of course, anyone who knows him knows that um, he is, he'll build mentally strong athletes. And um, he pushes us so hard and, and, kind of gives us a different sp perspective of things and before and after training he'll talk to us and I think that's kind of been my biggest thing this year is that I've totally transformed as an athlete um, mentally and that's something that I think got me to the top this year. Well, that's probably a side that most of us at home watching don't realize you know we see your deadlift numbers we see your fram but most of us don't understand the mental pressure and struggle of the athlete so when you showed up 2015 to the StubHub Center, a very different athlete. We all know how it played out and then come to the end of the very final. It's super close and you're standing out there. We're all watching and director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro, who has a flair for being dramatic, grabs the <laughs> microphone and says, the winner of the CrossFit Games, fittest woman in the world, is from Iceland. Dramatic pause and then says your name. After that last year you had, how did that feel? <laughs> Oh, that, that's like a feeling that I don't think I'll ever be able to put into words or describe. It's just, it's the biggest feeling in the world. It's, you come across the finish line and like I said, like, I don't know that I knew that I'd won. I kind of maybe thought that I did, but I'd never like let myself think it in case I didn't. <laughs> but, um, I came through and I kind of just like stood there, like, did I do it? Did I not? And, um... Um, didn't do anything until, of course, he's like, is from Iceland, and there's more people from Iceland there. <laughs> of course. So, of course, still can't even say anything until it's like, Captain Davis started. And so it's like, I think he just started crying immediately, but it was. Oh, you, you earned it. You enjoyed it. 
now you're the champ. The champ's lifestyle is very hectic. You know, we were talking, trying to get together for this interview, and you said that I'm maybe not the only one having a tough time get a hold, getting a hold of you, that your mom as well has asked for some extra help. <laughs> oh, my mom keeps joking around. She's having a hard time keeping up with me too, and she was like, maybe you should just, like, make an Excel spreadsheet, and we can all be updated. <laughs> you know, you got to track your children somehow. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so you're not only incredibly talented in CrossFit, but you're also representing Iceland in weightlifting. And due to that maybe busy schedule, you didn't <laughs> submit a photo that you needed. What happened uh, there? No. So I don't know if I was too late. I did submit a photo. It might have been too late. With <laughs> So they, I don't know if just the Icelandic Federation took their matters into their own hand. But um, I don't know if you can put the picture up here. But we I will. Did. They have a good sense of humor. Yeah, it's um, it's good. It's funny. <laughs> and so now, based upon just how well you did, you can't do any better. You were obviously selected to be a member of the Invitational team, and you were a member all the way back in 2012. How did it feel to get the news once again? Oh, wow. Um, that event in 2012 was still like one of my favorite events. It was so fun. It was so good. It was well run. And of course, um, just to be selected on a team that, um, I think we were six on a team right then, but now yep. to be four on a team and just to be selected as part of it is such an honor. Um, and I'm really excited to be back on that team. Well, I think uh, all of Europe is pulling for a victory this year. Last year in 2014, Europe took third out of four teams, so why should we expect a better performance this year? Because we're the best team. <laughs> <laughs> How can I argue with that, right? I mean, you've got three out of four <laughs> podium finishers on your team, so I think the future looks very bright, not only for you, but for the European team as well. So, Katrin, thank you very much, and uh, we wish you guys the best. Thank you. <laughs> that was, of course, the champ from 2015, Katrin Davis' daughter. If you want to see her and everyone else throwing down at the CrossFit Invitational, it happens December 6th in Madrid, Spain. Get your tickets at games.crossfit.com.